what we're going to do is use that vibrating shaking device that's attached to the top of the barrel there and drive it into the sediment here in order to collect the core. I have spent many years studying rivers on several continents and most rivers around the world are comprised of sand. They have sand on their bed and that sand is uh, moved by water and it forms dunes, not too dissimilar from the types of dunes that we're familiar with that we may find in desert environments. And when that sand moves along, it, it has a physical interaction with the flow itself. And we can look at the interactions, these physical interactions between the sand movement and the water discharge uh, to understand what the flux of sand is. And flux is simply the volume movement per unit time. Now, traditionally, most sand bed rivers have a very distinctive grain size. Now, the Yellow River is unique insofar that the grain size on the bed of the Yellow River is much smaller. It's on the order of about 100 microns. And before our particular study, we weren't sure how to quantify from a physics perspective the interaction between flow and the movement of the sediment. Moreover, we had no assessment or understanding or prediction for what the bed of the river would look like. And it turns out that uh, it, it's shaped completely differently from what we find in most traditional or coarser sand bed river systems. The Yellow River sediment flux is about 20 times higher than that standard so-called physical law. We always wonder why, what happened in this system. So it's not, it's not until we, we start our field survey in 2015 use the advanced technology, the three-dimensional radar, to uh, measure the sur surface bed. Then we realize, oh, the Yellow River has a really smooth and flat bed. So there's no bumpy or wavy structure to dissipate the energy from the water flow, so, such that all the energy of water flow can be used to transport sediment, and there's nothing else to waste, uh, to, to waste your energy. The river, it's known as the, the cradle of Chinese civilization because it, it's where uh, approximately three or four thousand years ago uh, the Chinese people first began to inhabit the region of, of mainland China. But interestingly enough, it's also known as China's sorrow. And that's because there's so much sediment that moves through the river system that it oftentimes breaks its levees and changes course catastrophically uh, during big flood events. And this has everything to do with the, the large volume of sediment that the system is transporting through, through the river channel itself. So there isn't a lot of motivation by the Chinese people to understand how this river system behaves in terms of transporting its sediment. And there's been a lot of advancement and a lot of of um, great studies that have been published in, in recent times to learn more about this. And, and the idea is to utilize or leverage these studies to better predict how the river might respond to future flood events.